Sami, the, the domestic debt exchange program yeah. is one that the finance minister talked about gains, but savings that have been made, $12 billion for that matter. Yeah. Now, at what cost did that come telling to the Ghanaian people? Because he makes reference to sacrifices made. But what is the extent of the sacrifice that we're talking about? Okay, thank you. So um, let me start this way. Uh, on 1st July 2022, when the president made a call, or we, Ghana reached out to the IMF, mm -hmm. and they did their debt sustainability analysis, they concluded that we were in a debt distress category. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the, the, our debt to GDP ratio in present value terms, um, I think uh, uh, we'll, we'll open the slide right now. Yeah, um, we're, we're trending around 109 percent when we're supposed to be around 55 percent okay. as a medium debt carrying country. Okay. Now, to bring your debt from 109 percent of GDP in present value terms to 55 percent by 2028, <laughs> you could not deliver on that solely by relying on fiscal consolidation measures, which has to do with a combination of taxes higher taxes or revenue enhancement and expenditure rationalization. Uh, can we go back to... Um, no. Okay, so, so, so the, the fund had determined that if we needed to restore debt sustainability by through the traditional means which we call fiscal consolidation, then the, then the primary surplus that we needed to deliver mm. on annual basis would actually be more than 8%. Right. which means that the level of taxes we have to impose in this country combined with the expenditure card, nobody will be able to bear it. Mm. Okay, because even uh, for some countries, it was even difficult for them delivering primary surplus of, let's say, 1.5%, um, mm -hmm. let alone 8%, 12% or so. All right, so, okay, yeah, stay here. Mm -hmm. This is fine. So you can see the results of the debt sustainability analysis, mm -hmm. right? December 2022 cutoff point, 109%. We needed to be at 55%. You can see it down there by 2028. Yeah. So, so the burden sharing that we, we, we preach has to do with the fact that if we had to rest restore debt sustainability using fiscal consolidation alone, <laughs> this country would explode. So how do we share the burden? So fiscal consolidation through higher taxes Higher taxes is one of the price when we say at what cost, because we've had to pay more taxes and all of that in order to have this recovery. And that would only bring the debt to GDP ratio in present value terms to about 81%. And we needed to, to do domestic debt exchange. And you know why that is important? Actually, from 2021, you will see that the domestic debt was actually imposing higher fiscal cost on the, mm. on, on the state compared to even external debt. So in the case of Ghana, and unlike Zambia, there was no way Ghana could restore their sustainability by only restructuring our external debt. Right. Remember, that is not the first time we are restructuring our debt. Uh, before 2022, we had restructured our debt about six times or so, 1966, 1968, 1970, 1972, and then even 2001, HIPIC was a form of debt restructuring. So, and all of these things were external debt. The reason we now have to restructure the domestic debt was that... Which all, is unprecedented. Which is unprecedented is because if you look at our interest payment, more than 65% of the interest payment had to go to domestic debt alone. Okay? And our problem was more of a problem of liquidity, which is also then manifesting in solvency challenges. So there was no way Ghana could restore their sustainability without restructuring the domestic debt. Okay, fine. To do so, right... We, in fact, we, we had recommended that we could have used granular data and exclude pensioners. Right. And in fact, and that wouldn't have caused so much harm to Ghanaians. Mm. We didn't do that. This one size fits all and all of that, I think is, 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 the, is the error the MPP made, right? In terms of how the domestic debt exchange was applied. So in all, in CDs, we saved 61 billion CDs. From the domestic, in, in other words, the money we took from people. Yes, I mean that's that's haircut. So if you see people walking with that part of their hair, <laughs> it's, it's in our fiscal books, right? <laughs> <laughs> and that is a sign of recovery. We've okay, taken so, people sixty one yeah. billion cities. So, My goodness. so, so those those were the sacrifices that we needed to. In fact, the the, the Bank of Ghana suffered the most. They suffered fifty percent uh, haircut on principal.
And that is how come Bank of Ghana recorded one of the biggest losses in our history, right? That has rendered their balance sheet largely worthless, right? Mm -hmm. So look at it. And, and look, the, 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 the Bank of Ghana is not just any other bank. It's the bank of last resort. Mm -hmm. in, in all instances, you do everything possible to preserve their balance sheet. So let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what happened. Mm -hmm. When they were restructuring the debt with the IMF's own recommendation, the IMF decided that multilateral debt of almost $8.8 .8 billion mm -hmm. had to be excluded from the universe of eligible bonds to be excluded, to be restructured. You know why? Because the IMF and the World Bank and the African considered themselves as international bank of, of last resort and their balance sheet should not be impaired. Oh, but the Bank of Ghana, which is a bank of last resort here, could be messed up. This was what we we've done. So as I said, look, we, we, the, the, right. we can learn the lessons from the past, but you see, like I said, this recovery is one of the most expensive, very pricey, and I hope that we will learn the lessons so that going forward, we we'll put in place the right measures to avoid this um, um, recurring. Remember, it will not, it will, the way I see it, it will not be the last time we we'll restructure our domestic debt. Oh, uh, yes. no, 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 2026, yes. the new government yes. campaign. So, and that's why I'm saying that the way we discuss this, even from the NDC and all of them, I think let's have a certain perspective that these right. challenges, you can't wish them away. Regardless of whoever wins the election, a certain level of humility and, 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 and adaptability will be very helpful in getting all every Ghanaian on board. Because in terms right. of the reforms that we need to do, you need every Ghanaian largely on board. So that let's not let, right. sense yeah, let's we'll, not we'll, polarize we'll, the situation. We'll, we'll, we're going to go for we'll a quick break. That, yeah. When we're back, we'll, we'll okay. have okay. some reactions yeah. to we'll this. We'll talk about and the power matter. We'll be back shortly. Stay with us here on Key Point. Welcome back to Key Point on TV3. Ge gentlemen. Yeah, no, no, Prof. Yes, we're live on 3FM 92.7. Also on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, DSV Channel 279. All across the world on 3news.com on a number of radio stations across the country as well. Thank you very much. Uh, received uh, the 4,110 of your messages. Wow. And I do acknowledge them. And I, at this moment, just want to tell you that I have this been clothed been clothed this morning by Cogra Clothing. Cogra Clothing is the best version of you. Locate them on the Spintex Road, 18 Junction, opposite the Allied Oil Filling Station. You can contact Cogra Clothing for this and many others on 0244 238 341. 0244 238 341. Choose Cogra Clothing. Choose right. Council. Yeah, I oh, see some food items. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. no, 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 no. Could you, could you, no. Council. Yes, sir. I see some food items. Yeah. And, and <laughs> ha, you, you, you want to bring the reality to check to life. Exactly. With this. But what, 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 what is this meant to, to do? Yeah. Exactly. It's just for us. They say a picture is what? Worth a thousand words. So you see my kinky there going for between five and seven CDs. And this small fish, 15 Ghana. Can the camera zoom, Mr. Apredo? Yes, can you zoom? This small fish, 15 Ghana cities. Is it the what, head I can't... Is That's it... from the mid section uh, to the tail. You see, 15 Ghana. All right, because I'm left handed. 15 Ghana. 15 Ghana cities. So you look at it, then of course, as usual, the, uh, 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 what do you call it? Cocoa. Cocoa, five cities. With the, sugar, right? No, so this, I've left that the sugar. Because some people say if you don't have money, then you shouldn't <laughs> take sugar, you shouldn't take milk, right? And the last time you even made the point that some people you can do without the milk, right? Then the both fruit, two cities for each one, small, two cities. I mean, come on, each one, two cities. So if you do, of course, Almighty Calipo is here. I brought Calipo because, you know, at the time, Kufuado was making noise. Uh -huh, 2016. said Calipo was expensive. Today, you know how much it's. Some place, the cheapest you get it will be five cities. Some places, seven cities. How much mm -hmm. was Calipo at the time he was talking? Was it about one city and 50 pesos? You say. So practically, you see that the cost of living has gone high. Earlier on, uh, Safwa Koku made the point that the whole world is being impacted by the Russia-Ukraine war. Prof corrected him, and I want to repeat. 
the levels of impact are different. We, like the foolish maiden in the Bible, we didn't have extra oil. We are not resilient. You see the, the, uh, the foolish maidens in the Bible when they were going for their wedding. The wise ones went and took extra oil. Ghana being foolish, we had no extra oil. So the least uh, headwinds, then we are dead. The least headwinds. Kotopoku, you know Ghana, our economy, ask Professor Bopkin. You go to the uh, University of Ghana when they teach you business school, economics. Every three to four years, our economy suffers some shocks. Every yeah. three to four years. It's, it's a cyclical. It's cyclical. So it's when you come and say nobody saw Russia, Ukraine coming down like hi, that's a foolish maiden. The foolish maiden who never prepared. Because when you were coming, you said in 18 months, you were going to change the structure of the economy. The but, Gajisbek economy. Thank you, the Gajisbek economy. By the time Russia, Ukraine hit, you had... 36 months. Meanwhile, you asked for what? 18. So you are double. How many rice farms had you uh, listen, farmed at the time? The poultry, you said we're going to do local production of poultry. How many poultry farms had you uh, set up? Go to the oil, etc. You see? So when you mention Russia, Ukraine, then it just reminds me that we are foolish, led by a foolish oh, government. We, 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 yeah. But, but, council, because we didn't prepare. Yeah, in the context. Ah, the Bible said it, that the maiden who didn't have the... I, I just I wanted that, that to be put in Thank you. so that uh, you are yes. not taking out of context. Uh -huh. Yes, it's the Bible that says, so okay. when you have no extra oil, you are foolish, foolish maiden. That's you what were... Jesus actually said. Excellent. Uh -huh. But yet, you're in opposition, you were all over the place saying that, oh, just give me this economy. 18 months, 18 months. We are borrowing too much. The, this, uh, look, the fundamentals, if you're... Uh, this, um, the fundamentals of the economy uh, is weak. The exchange rate will expose you. Sami Jemfi made a point, so I don't need to explain all of that, right? Okay. So please, let's take notice. Yes, Russia-Ukraine war disrupted right. the, the world, right? We don't deny that. But the levels of impact have okay. varied. The foolish people have been more impacted than the wise. Look, oh. if it, let, let's make this point. Europe, Europe that was hit, you know, they were wheeling a lot of gas from Russia to Europe, Germany, etc. Mm. You know, at a point, oil prices went beyond $100. Mm. They found alternatives. Germany right. and its neighbors, they found alternatives. They've ramped up their drive towards uh, renewables. As of 2023, for the first time, 40% of global energy supply came from renewables. For the first time, renewables, 40%. And they've done diversification, found alternative sources, right? And their yeah, inflation, this inflation we keep crying about, all those councils, you are talking about less than 10%. We, well, 54%, and then you say everybody's been impacted. How? On the, How can you compare 54% to less than 10%? On the bit about this um, unemployment rate, could you, you, you referenced a publication that captured 4%. Yes. And what was the source of that 4%? Fitch. Fitch Solution. Fitch Solution. Yes. It's on Joy. And, and Fitch, Joy. Fitch, Fitch, Fitch basically Fitch. projected our unemployment at 4%. And and based on the data points, which data points did they capture? Well, you? you have to, Fitch is, pub, is basically published it. I have not interrogated the data point, but that is, uh, okay. Let me, let me, uh, let me make my so point quickly no, before on I that go point, to that. No, you come. Now, let me quickly have a quick, quick, quick intervention from Alfred Apia. Is a, is this, uh, it's a data, data and, and scientist. Um, <laughs> Joining us on Zoom quick for a quick one. Alfred, now with this un unemployment rate that we're talking about, what exactly does the data say? Yeah, so can you hear me, Alfred? I can hear you clearly. Yeah. So the, the unemployment rate that when you Google or when you go to Fitch Solutions or, or all those sources, right, it comes from the ILO estimate. Um, and the definition is different. So the, the standard definition or the standard definition is when you are considering you're considered unemployed when you have no job you're available to work and then you're actively searching so the ghana start service and a lot of other developing countries do that they relax the assumption the criteria of actively searching right because in many developing countries there's usually limited job opportunities and so you have people giving up like so when you go and say you you are you have to be unemployed only when you are actively searching right mm -hmm. Um, so, so that usually underestimates the numbers that you see in the ILO. But because the ILO has to compare multiple countries, right? So right. we try they try to use one definition so that it's comparable across countries. But when you're looking at in-country analysis, it's always important to look at your stats agency. So I give you an example. So 
um, in the 2021 census, right, the unemployment rate was 13.4 percent according to the Start Service. The ILO, if you use the ILO definition, is 3.2 percent. So see. you are already underestimating the unemployment rate by 10 percentage points, right? right? The same thing with 2020, 2022 with the AHIS, like the average is 13.1% right. according to the stat service, but the ILO applying that definition gets 3.1%. It's also always important to know that the ILO estimate is also, because we don't have the labor force surveys consistently, what they do is they try to use some econometric model to try to predict or project what it's supposed to be. But that does not really mean that that's what turns out in reality, right? right. So this is just education for everybody. Once you go, always when you Google unemployment rate from Ghana for Ghana, it's going to be lower. But that is not the real unemployment rate because of that actively searching criteria that every other country uses. But it's important that in country we focus on what the Star Service is telling us. Perfect, Alfred. Up here. Thank you. So that's uh, that Star Service says fourteen point seven. Yes. Okay. Now I'm not apologizing. When somebody do a stats and put fifteen years to above. 15 years and above, as a metric, as the demographics for the age for unemployment data, is erroneous in Ghana. Because 15 years to 21, at least, he's in school. So if you, what, when you say he's unemployed, hold on, hold on. He's unemployed, but he's not. Allows he, oh, but you see, the, hold on. Is a 15-year-old to 21-year-old, what is the stage of a 15 to 20-year-old in oh. Ghana? Is he looking for a work or he's in school? He's allowed to work. So that is like why actively work. Hold on. Actively section. Which, if he's not in school and he's actively section, then that is the unemployed. But if somebody is in school, you can't categorize all people who are between the age of 15 to 21 as unemployed because some of them are in school. Uh, that is the no, point. But so you said, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, they have not. That's it. They've not. They have. They have not. You see, for political experience, Sami Jemfi will use a much higher. Listen, for political experience, Sami Jemfi will use a much higher number because it fits his narrative. The point I'm making. Then let me now. Let me. Let me make my point. Look. Okay. Let's come out of this thing and deal with this. Sami Jemfi wants to make us believe that. The Nanado led government that has now created 169 new factories under 1D1F is doing negative in terms of uh, the, the no, status. It's, 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 hold, hold, hold it's not him. I think no, no, no. I don't know. You see, he read something. The, the budget, the, not the, something. the performance, what Ghanaians need to hear. In, from 2016 to date, the Nanado led government has now brought about 169 new factories <laughs> under 1D1F. The 1D1F has helped 321 factories and over 154. Now, there are new factories, <laughs> so and why, there why, are factories... Why, why the Alfred, let me land and stop interjecting me, please. That. Oh, sorry, what's one of the stories that? No, the references he made... The references the budget. Let me, let me, what I'm telling Presented you is that in you. a budget, like your brother came online, your friend, uh, your colleague came online and tried to give a certain interference, whatever. You need to inter... You need to interrogate an appendix for what it was for. Let's look at the real data. We have created that this government has created 170,000 jobs under 1D1F. 170,000 proven. Wow. Hold on. 170,000 jobs. My brother. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. There, yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. You yeah. can physically. Yeah. Let me. Yeah. Let me. Yeah. Let me. Yeah. Let me land. Yeah. Let me. Yeah. Let me yeah. land. Yeah. 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 You can. You can, yeah. you can yeah. physically yeah. see 169,000 new factories that did not exist in Germany. 169,000. 169. Are you coming from a different planet? 169 factories. What is the You don't. What is your source? Go on, go on. What is my source? No, let me. Please, please. Let me land. Let me land. Alfred, let me land. This government, this government is building 111 hospitals. Hold on, Alfred. 111 hospitals. Alfred. 111 hospitals, which will create 70,000 on ILO, which is not applicable to Ghana, mm -hmm. then under John Mahama Pair, the ILO stats that the World Bank uses, unemployment was 2.2. .2. Professor Bobkin, just Google it for well, me. Well, I, 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 am, I am not. But this look. is what Bafo, what the employment minister of his party said. Let me read that but to you. One minute. Why you one, read five seconds. Uh -huh. You're going to allow me to read something on my time. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> ILO. You're, you're going to allow me to read something on my time. Mr. Speaker, well, who's time? Do you have any time to speak now? <laughs> who's time? <laughs> Somebody that has created Mr. Speaker, 111 ILO's standard definition. You will be on social media after this. Okay. 100. You will not retract what you have said. Everybody will be mocking you after this. Why 
169. Thank you very much. And Martin Pebble, thank you. I'm out for the country. Have a great weekend. Thank you.